is New Day Northwest. Now, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to New Day Northwest. The author known as the Cowboy Philosopher is here to tell us about his newest novel and the crazy book signings he's planning here in Washington State. And right after Would the break, the Cowboy Philosopher shares his unique approach to life, and it might just change the way you spend the rest of your summer. Don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Karu Paparitz is a man who truly marches to the beat of his own drum. His life reads like a giant adventure with one constant weaving in and out of his story, his love of writing. His newest book, The Legacy Letters, is an ode to his family and families everywhere, in fact, containing quotes, wishes, and letters of inspiration and joy. Karu joins us now to share more about The Legacy Letters and the very unconventional book tour he's planned here in Washington. Welcome. How are you doing? Mark, it's an absolute pleasure. Very nice Thank to you. meet you. Gotcha. So you're living here in Washington State and in Arizona, and in Arizona. So you have a little bit of the both lifestyles. Yeah. How does one become a cowboy philosopher? Uh, you get on a horse. Yeah. You ride around and you and think, think. A and think and think and think and think. Yeah. No, and then you write it down. And then you write it down. Yeah. I read your book, Thank loved your book, and you. I love the idea of the way the book is constructed. Can mm -hmm. you share that with us without spoiling anything? Yeah, basically, the, at, at its heart, the Legacy Letters is a series of letters written by this father who would never live to see his children, and um, they're their practical, moral, spiritual guidebook for them for the rest of their lives. And so it's everything from how to say please and thank you, mm -hmm. how to work, how to be 18 years old, things on love and money and travel, and, and so it's this one man's passionate you know, signature to how he wants to live life. And how to pass on fatherhood if you never had a chance That's to do a, it yeah. in an everyday sort of way, this kind of moral construct that he writes about. Where did this idea come from? You know, I think I had a uh, early midlife crisis. And uh, it's I was. Better to have it early. Uh, yes. You have time to recover. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm waiting for my second one. So. No, I was uh, working in Hollywood, of all places on the planet, and, uh, you know, the, cl the cliche idea, it's just a fast-paced life, and I just thought, you know, is this all there is to it? I was working in the feature films right. and whatnot, and I decided, nope, this, is, this can't be the way that uh, there's got to be more to life. And I said, uh, I pulled out stakes from there and sort of came back to my roots. My granddad had a small ranch when I was growing up in mm -hmm. Washington. Mm -hmm. Ended up on the Arizona border, and there I was working as a cowboy. How about that? Yeah, and in all the desolation and glory, and all of a sudden, the pen picked itself up after about 25 years of just waiting to, to write Isn't this book. Isn't that something? Yeah. Does it reflect your own views about life? Absolutely, yeah. It's yeah. something that you, because I read it and thought, this is something I would give to my child yeah. and mm -hmm. would enjoy them reading and discussing, and is... Um, so touching and moving. I oh, had to stop you. for a minute a couple times because you do tear up in this, but ultimately so life-affirming and, and really pleasant. You've gotten lots of interest from other parents mm -hmm. saying similar things, right? That must be a, a very fulfilling thing to hear. Yeah, I mean, one of the wonderful things was this Mom's Choice Award, which was mm -hmm. stunning to get. Yes. Um, and things, for example, it was a great story the other day. Um, I was at a book signing. Mom and her boy come up, and they're um, and I say, I tell them about the book, and they say, Oh, that sounds interesting. Which, of course, is the second nastiest word in the English language. <laughs> and uh, basically, I said, Hey, if you just pick up this book anywhere in the book, you will um, you'll turn the next page. Yeah. Kids on the cell phone. I say, Okay, put down the cell phone. You read it too. They both read it. Turn the page. Turn the page, turn the page. I can believe it. And it was an amazing moment, yeah. I can believe yeah. it. And it's not didactic or lesson-y. I mean, it, it is written with great love. Do you have kids of your own? Yeah, I have a little boy. And, yeah. I mean, it seemed very personal in that way. So you do these cool book signings that are unlike anything I've ever heard of before. Give me some examples of what people do to get to you to get their books signed. All right, so for, <laughs> for my love of Washington, I have the Legacy Letters, Wild, Wonderful, and Washington First Ever's Book Tour. First Ever's talks about going, um, for example, the other day we were on a raft trip going down the Skagit River signing books, and I bring out this big banner, and people are, <laughs> oh my God, we're going to do it on a volcano and kayaks in the Puget Sound and Fantastic. the ferry just to celebrate. And again, it's the passion behind the writing in the book, the man who wants to live life, and I figure, you know what, this yeah. is how I want to present the book to the world. And you really love the state, too, oh, so this gosh, is a great yeah. way to kind of promote yeah. all of that at yeah. one time. Yeah. Um, so, 
In terms of your most favorite book signing site, the thing that you would like look down the road and say, if I could be there on top of Mount Rainier or wherever and sign books, what would it be, do you think? Oh, top of Mount Rainier. That's it. Oh, that would be just the cat's meow. You right might there. be by yourself. Yes, there I might. Be <laughs> you get up there. And I'm just, okay, <laughs> who's next? Trying to get those books up there would be, oh, would be my, tough enough. Yeah. So if, as, as the cowboy philosopher, as I go through my week, um, give me just a couple of your, your first thoughts. If we wanted to sort of start our kids off or, or think about giving this book to them, what might we share first? I think the whole idea of um, creating a legacy life is creating legacy moments. And they're very, very small moments. The idea of how can I create a moment of you know, deep happiness, of generosity, of fairness, um, within just, for example, we could be sitting here and this is a, well, of course, this is a legacy moment. It's a good moment. It's a great moment. And, and that's what life is, right? I yeah. mean, one of the things I pulled from the book is that these aren't just, you know, thoughts about how to be forever happy, how to find your bliss. This was really about what life really is, which is that you gather up these moments and you right, put them in right. your basket yeah, and you we'll hope put, at the end yeah. of life that your basket is full, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Well, that's what we can all hope for. There's yeah. some great lessons in there. How old is your little boy? He's seven. Seven. All boy. He's all, of course he is. Oh. He's the cowboy <laughs> philosopher's son. He's already got his title figured out. Thank you so much Margaret, for joining us. Pleasure. Couldn't Thank recommend you. the book enough. We've posted more information online about the Legacy Letters, Caruso, tour and a number of more traditional signings in case you don't want to kayak to him including some this afternoon Tuesday July 8th at the Barnes and Noble in downtown Seattle and at the Edgewater Hotel. Carew has brought copies of this book for everybody in the audience and I know you will enjoy it. Thank you so much Thank for you. that. Thank That's you. terrific. Yeah.